Michael Van Runkel here for HotCars.com. Welcome to another episode of Off-Road Legends, where we're taking a deep dive into some of the most iconic off-road vehicles of all time. Now in today's modern era of massive pickup trucks, super powerful engines and long travel suspension, yeah, I'm talking about the Ram TRX, the Ford F-150 Raptor, and now the V8-powered F-150 Raptor R, it can be easy to forget that once upon a time, pickups were all about being simple and reliable. In comparison to those monsters, today we're going to be taking a look at one of the smallest pickup trucks I've ever driven, a Nissan Hardbody. The Hardbody was boxy, tiny, had a series of underpowered engines, and started around $7,000 back in the 1980s. And yet, somehow, in 1987, it managed to win the Baja 500 and would go on to compete in the Baja 1000 and the Mint 400 for a number of years. And if you start paying attention, there are a ton of hard bodies still on the road today. So how did something so small become so legendary and manage to be so reliable over the decades? Well, this was before a bunch of electronics started creeping into pickup trucks, which makes the hard body even to this day pretty reliable and easy to fix. Well, I actually grew up driving a hard body back in the 90s, sitting on my stepdad's lap, learning to steer, use the pedals, and try not to clip rear view mirrors. And then in high school, I spent years delivering Christmas trees every holiday season. So let's take a trip back in time to when Nissan was still Datsun, and Datsun built the 720. But for now, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Thanks. The Nissan D21 pickup truck came out as a successor to Datsun 720 and was designed at Nissan Design America in San Diego, which was also responsible for some famous models like the Pathfinder, the Xterra, the 350Z, the 370Z, and even the R35 GTR. But unlike that $130,000 supercar, or $210,000 if you're going for the Nismo version, the Hardbody's main selling point was simplicity and reliability. The Hardbody name comes from a double-walled pickup truck bed, which reinforced the chassis, made it much less susceptible to rust and rot, and contributed to that iconic boxy styling. It was sold in Central and South America as the Camiones, and actually built through 2008. Here in the US, Nissan sold the hard body through the 1997 model year, though some customers were still able to buy them in 1998. And you could get it in a standard or extended cab, known as the King Cab, which is kind of an ironic name for what was essentially a super cheap little work truck. But you could get it with corduroy seats, which is like sort of Rolls Royce-y, if you think about it. In the back of the extended cab, you had jump seats that folded up and down sideways and gave you a lot more storage in the cabin of the truck, as opposed to leaving your tools in the truck bed and having to be worried about ripoffs. You could get the truck bed in six or seven foot configurations. And let me tell you, a six foot bed can hold a lot of Christmas trees. But Christmas trees are surprisingly heavy when they're fresh, which brings us to the hard body's various underpowered engine options. To start with, you had a 2.4 liter inline four engine. It was originally a Z24i, but then it was replaced by the KA24e, which was a single overhead cam, aluminum heads, iron block power plant that you might recognize the acronym for because it would go on to power the 240SX. Now you're thinking, hold on, did the Nissan Silvia have a pickup truck motor? It sure did. Nissan also offered a 3.0 liter V6 doing 135 horsepower and 154 pound-feet of torque, which in a truck that weighs just over 2,800 pounds was actually pretty good for the 1990s. For city dwellers, you could opt for only rear wheel drive, but for people who want to go off-roading in the off-roading legend that is the hard body, you gotta have four wheel drive. And you probably want the five speed manual. You could optionally get a four speed automatic with overdrive, but let me tell you from driving the rear wheel drive, six foot bed, single cab with the automatic, even if the four cylinder engine was a little peppy, it still felt pretty underwhelming driving on the freeway. Luckily, Christmas tree deliveries tend to be pretty local, so I didn't really struggle that much unless I was going up a steep hill with like a 10 to 11 foot Noble in the back. 
Now you might think that this being the late 80s and early 90s and we're talking about a work truck, that the Nissan Hardbody would have a carbureted engine. But it was actually fuel injected. One of the single concessions to modernization that Nissan actually made on the Hardbody because most didn't even come with AC. But that simplicity was great for racing in races like Baja because there were fewer things to break and when things did break, people knew how to fix them. And better yet, those tiny engines resulted in fuel economy as good as 35 miles per gallon for the inline four version, obviously the smallest version, which again, great for Baja in case you get lost in the desert and you're running out of fuel. The hard body suspension setup used leaf springs in the back and torsion bars up front, like, you know, a Porsche 911 or a Porsche 914 or even this 1998 Mitsubishi Montero behind me. But at 2,800 pounds, leaf springs do make that pickup truck feel pretty square. Altogether, it contributed to the hard body's first Baja win at the 1987 Baja 500. The simplicity, reliability, and ruggedness of the hard body all combined to give Nissan the first win at the Baja 500 in 1987 with driver Sherman Balch behind the wheel. Now my friend Shad Balch has put up some pictures of that hard body race truck on his Instagram. Shad, if you're watching this, can I please get a chance to take that thing out and blast around in the desert? We can even take your ZR2, I promise. Then to commemorate that desert racing success, Nissan produced 1,000 desert runner editions of the hard body, which today remain the most valuable because they look classic 80s and 90s with a little bit of livery, put some big tires on there, and just have yourself a blast out in the desert. More recently, a shop called Palapa Boys Racing rebuilt and restored a scoop truck version of the hard body to the tune of $1 million. They were inspired by a truck built by Nissan for the 1991 racing season that featured BF Goodrich's 37 inch tires. How on earth the hard body was able to have enough power to use 37 inch tires remains a mystery. Perhaps it was overstressing the engine, which would explain why when Palapa Boys Racing took that $1 million scoop truck to the Nora 1000 in 2016, they blew the motor. These days, pickup trucks just keep getting bigger and bigger. You've got the F-150 Raptor, and then Ram responded with the Ram TRX, which gobbles up Velociraptors. You've got the Velociraptor from Hennessy, and now Ford is coming out with the F-150 Raptor R with a supercharged V8. Nissan and Toyota are getting into the mix too. The Toyota Tundra is ginormous. The Chevy Silverado ZR2 off-roading version has leaf springs, like the Nissan Hardbody, and Nissan itself even builds the Titan, which fittingly, Titan, all caps everywhere because this thing is huge. It's more than 53 inches longer than the original Nissan Hardbody. It's over a foot taller and over a foot wider. That doesn't make it very easy to drive in town, but when you're blasting around at top speed in the desert, you do get a little bit more stability. You start to wonder where exactly is the pickup truck trend going in the future? Are we gonna be all electrified like the Rivian R1T, which weighs something like 7,000 pounds and has the equivalent of over 800 horsepower and is really a unibody city truck? We're not talking about the Nissan Hardbody anymore because there simply isn't anything like the Nissan Hardbody anymore. The Ford Ranger, the Chevy Colorado, they're huge. The Ford Maverick, not quite the same. It's again, more of a city truck. But let me ask you, do you think a Rivian R1T or a Ford Maverick are gonna be on the road over 25 years later, like my stepdad's Nissan Hardbody that I thrashed delivering Christmas trees? And, you know, it's been pretty reliable throughout that whole time. Yeah, it had a cracked radiator. Yeah, the paint's fading. It's got dings and scratches. And it did need a new ECU, which was probably the most expensive thing over all these years that my stepdad had to replace. And he had to ship the ECU to Texas. But like Cormac McCarthy wrote in All the Pretty Horses, scars have the strange power to remind us that our past is real. And I remember my past learning how to drive in a Nissan hard body every time I see one driving around the streets of LA, which is pretty much every day. 
because they're still around and clearly people still value a truck that's simple, reliable, and maybe has a little bit of off-roading heritage. Maybe Nissan can look to their own past and realize that they could be building a smaller pickup truck. I think the market's ready for it. I think Dodge should bring back the Raider or the Ram 50 and come out with a tiny pickup truck to compete with all these behemoths on the road today. But something like that, maybe from Nissan, would be a ton of fun to take out in the desert and see what a tiny, lightweight pickup truck can do amid all the monsters currently on the road today. If you want to learn more about the Nissan Hardbody, go check out hotcars.com. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about this iconic off-roading legend. And as always, please like this video and subscribe to our channel before you sign off. It really helps us out. Thanks.